We'll start off by creating a directory and a file that we'll call caddy file. Make sure the C is capital. The caddy file is where we'll configure the reverse proxy settings. The reason we're creating it manually is because we want Docker to map it out so we can access the file. If we don't create it manually, it'll create it as a directory instead of a file. Next up, we'll take a look at the Docker Compose file. In case you don't have Docker Compose installed, I'll leave a link to the command for it in the description. Docker Compose isn't a requirement for Docker at all, but something I'd highly recommend and what we'll use in this tutorial to make our life a whole lot easier. In the Docker Compose YAML file, I'll paste my configuration. What's noteworthy here is the networks part where I define a Docker network and name it Caddy. This means we can add other containers to the Docker network, allowing Caddy to handle the reverse proxy. All containers you add to the Docker Compose file need to be defined as part of the Caddy network. If you add a container outside of the Docker Compose file by using normal Docker commands, you need to be aware that the Docker network might be called something different than what's defined in the Compose file. You can see the actual name of the Docker network using Potsena. Once we've saved our Docker Compose file, we can call sudo docker compose up with the D flag. This will create the containers, the Docker network, and make sure everything is configured as specified in our Compose file. Once this is done, we can open up the caddy file we created previously and in here you'll have to specify the email you want to use for the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate, then we can add in our domain. I've used the subdomain here since I want to use the specific domain for this container. It doesn't have to be a subdomain. The simplest way to set up the reverse proxy is by typing reverse underscore proxy and then the name of the container as defined in your Docker Compose file and then the port of it. The port isn't the published port but the internal port of the container. Potato, for example, always runs on port 9000, but most web applications would be 80 or 443. In that case, you would specify the HTTP port, which is port 80. Before we can look at the DNS for our domain, we need to make sure that the ports for Caddy are open on our network. This is only something you need to do if you're hosting the server yourself, as it will already be done if someone is hosting the server for you. The process is different for every router and firewall, but as an example on a very basic router here, you go to network settings, then NAT rules, and here I've added two rules, one for port 80 and one for port 443, both going to the LAN IP of my Ubuntu server. The last part is the DNS file domain. You could do this in two different ways. The first way would be to use a star as the host value and then your public IP as the value. This would mean you could specify any subdomain in the caddy file and redirect it to any container. The second choice would be to specify the host value manually for any subdomain you want. This would mean that in the process of adding a new subdomain, you would need to add it in the caddy file and in the DNS setting of your domain. For this reason, I'd recommend using the star host value, but it might not be the right choice for you depending on your needs. After our DNS settings have been saved, it might take a while for them to propagate. But once they have, you can see I can go to potena.bluehipper.org and I'm greeted with the Potena interface and everything will function as normal and with SSL activated. Now, the next time I want to add a container that runs a web service, all I have to do is edit the caddy file, add my subdomain, and specify the container and port it should redirect to. Then save the file, restart the caddy container, or use Docker exec to call caddy reload for a more graceful reload. Once up and running, we can see that we can now access the new subdomain. This would also work with multiple different domains, and it doesn't have to be a subdomain. Thanks for watching the video. If you by any chance like hippos, the color blue, or watching tech videos, make sure to subscribe for more content coming soon.